what is going on all my fellow godlies and warframe enthusiasts around the world i'm vance bringing you another episode of reforge where we're going to be taking a look at the hunk of junk the tin can master of magnetism herself magpron now before i even get into this build i've got to take a moment to fanboy because this deluxe skin is off the hook like if this is the bee's knees it has reinvigorated my intrigue for mag prime something that's very very difficult to do because i'm kind of an asshole so big props to digital extremes for a job well done this is amazing i have included it in one of my main loadouts because of it bravo now this isn't necessarily an update for mag so if you're familiar with the initial god build setup that we did, that one is still okay. And if, if that's all the news you need, then you don't have to continue watching. However, I will say this. The weapons that we were using for the initial god build setup, they're obsolete. They don't do the damage that they used to do. And never mind the fact that they didn't cover a distance like what is required in the Plains of Eidolon. So, for that reason, we are changing the loadout entirely for the weapons. Not so much the build of Mag, but for the weapons that she's using. Alright, so let's just dive right in. For anybody who's not familiar with the initial god build setup, this is what I'm using. Brief Respite, Power Drift, Redirection... Intensify, Overextended, Fleeting Expertise, Shield Transference, Prime Flow, and Prime Continuity. By now you probably should know how Mag plays, but if you don't, your first ability will jerk enemies straight to you. Your second ability will put a bubble over them that pulls any enemies who touch it into the center. It keeps them locked there anytime they try to shoot. The bullets remain in the bubble, spin around, and ultimately cycle back to the center where they hurt them, they, they hurt themselves. It's very useful because our weapons can affect that as well. With the third ability, you just click it once to keep upping yourself some shields with this nifty little mod right here that you're certainly going to need. And then with the ult, I would actually suggest not ever using that because just like Grandpa hopping on the banjo every time Mardi Gras is in town, this was good, then it was bad, then it was good, then it was bad, and it feels like it's gonna be on that roller coaster for a while now, and I would just suggest to give up faith and crush ever being a good thing, because it's chances are it's probably if it ever gets good again, it's just gonna get bad once more. So moving on to what makes this loadout super important. Now I'm not gonna be using Tord for anything other than close range engagements. If I know for a fact that I'm going to be defending something, an objective, or I'm going to be standing in just an X amount of time somewhere, say I'm mining, and I turn the corner and there's a bunch of enemies camped out there. And if I'm going to be spending some time in the, the caverns and bunkering down, I'm going to use Torrid. Why? Because it meshes so well with Magnetize. If you cast Magnetize on enemies and then you launch your Torrid shells, straight in the middle of that bubble it's gonna rip and shred armor off of those heavily armored units and it's gonna decimate their health because it does so well with corrosive and cold on top of that we're using totally different statuses for the sentinel which we'll get to that in a minute but i have to cover something very very essential and that's the distance that we spoke of with planes of eidolon this is the main reason and the main focus of why we've changed up the weapons entirely. It's because Arca Cisco has the distance. And I would suggest that if you're running and gunning in the Plains of Eidolon that you actually keep the Arca Cisco out at all times. Unless, of course, as I mentioned before, unless you know that you're just going to be bunkering down for the long haul. Otherwise, I'd totally keep my distance with Mag because she's kind of a little bit squishy anyways. Keep your distance, rely mostly on your pull and your magnetize. But if you're really, really keen on CQC, I threw something extra into this loadout to make it all worth your while. There's a good strategy that you can use for eliminating enemies that are directly in front of you, and that's using the magnetize and then invading your own bubble using a slam attack to knock them off their feet and capitalizing on incredible finisher damage with the Vanka Prime. 
This does really well against heavily armored units. Almost too well. So well, in fact, that I think that if I say this out loud, Digital Extremes is just going to rush back to their version of the game and nerf this sucker. So, I'm just going to put it out there that it's, it's kind of broken. You can kill enemies very quickly, and this... it... It's not discriminative. It will go and take down level 150 heavy gunners like it's nobody's business. So if you want to invade the Magnetize and you feel like turning your, your mag into an ultimate Wolverine destructive force of... I mean, I, I envision my mag as a combination between Wolverine and Magneto, which is so crazy. So when she's in combat, she's a hell of a lot of fun. She's got the distance. She's got CQC. She's very, very well versed for the Plains of Eidolon using this specific loadout. Only thing we lack at this point is the Sentinel. Um, I could, ch I could have chosen to run with like Prisma Shade to keep me cloaked, but the thing is, is I have to get close enough to my enemies and not shoot. And in the Plains of Eidolon, they're gonna see me. They're gonna spot me. So I might as well capitalize on Helios's ability to scan enemies while they're stuck in the magnetize because they're being held still and they're not really gonna die unless I kill them or my teammates kill them and let's face it with all the bugs going around with Planes of Eidolon I was soloing half the time anyways so any scans that I needed to do for the Planes of Eidolon I got done using this setup and it was super useful last thing I'm gonna cover for this specific loadout is something that I've talked about all the time I've said it in previous videos and I'll say it again just in case there's new viewers who are not caught up to speed with why I work the way I do. So I'm not ever going to use a shotgun on my Sentinel if I am also using a shotgun on my Warframe. Same can be said about rifles. I'm not going to use a rifle on my Warframe if I'm using a rifle on my Sentinel. The reason for that being is because rifle mods are shared across the board from your Warframe to your Sentinel same can be said about the shotgun. So if ever I'm using a rifle on my Warframe, I'm going to use a shotgun on my Sentinel. If ever I'm using a shotgun on my Warframe, I'm going to use a rifle on my Sentinel. And I, it's just because I don't want to duplicate any expensive mods. It's kind of a nightmare upgrading a Serration and a Hornet Strike, all those different mods. I, I'd rather not share. I'd rather just keep it this simple because when I do use my shotgun, I use something like a Volclock. So for this particular instance, it's it's kind of better that we use Sweeper Prime because anytime you get into your own Magnetize and invade that bubble, you're not going to be affecting them with Corrosive with this particular build. No, instead we're going to be affecting them with Radiation, which it's a crying shame that we don't have Condition Overload on our Vanka but you're applying multiple status effects and let's face it they've been coming out with a lot of mods that support status damaging types it's really not needed but it does spark up some potential ideas for other frames i'm not going to give it away i'll leave it as a surprise for a, a following video but i will say that when you apply multiple statuses that you have you statistically have a better chance at killing your enemy right off the starting gate I mean, it's always useful. Um, you, you definitely want to put something on your Sentinel to do damage to make it offense savvy, regardless of what you're doing. I mean, you don't want it there to just scan, do you? Of course, you want it there to heal you and maybe put some shields on you. Not that it's very needed for Mag, because Mag can put shields on herself, but you want your Sentinel to be useful, and I just wouldn't recommend bringing something like a, a Kubro or a Helmet Charger, because with mag you're gonna try to use link shields link health link armor like i usually do and because mag is so squishy herself she's not gonna benefit the companion at all this is why i'm gonna stick to the sentinel and encourage that you do the same so if you like this video and you learned something from it it always helps if you smash that like button do as i always encourage you to do and Comment, share, subscribe, and until the next time, this has been Vance, signing out. Peace.